Biocon, a path to market for Biomab. State of current market. The Indian market represents 21 of the global head and neck cancer cases and 20% 7% of the global deaths. Indian healthcare system is both public and private, 20% public and 80% private. This will impact the affordability of the drug as most Indians will be paying out of pocket. The primary target segment is doctors and oncologists due to they will be the ones recommending the drug to the general population. The secondary target segment is head and neck and cancer patients who are typically lower middle class workers, blue collar, who chew tobacco. 190,000 head and neck and cancer patients exist in the secondary market. A potential market size for off-label offerings include breast, lung, colorectal, brain, and pancreatic cancer. Biocon is currently profitable. We have high capital investments to fund the launches of clinical trials, a manufacturing facility priced at $25 million, teams of sales, marketing, and operations, and advertising. Ebitrux, a competing company, has sales exceeding $1 billion in 2006. They are currently priced at four dollars to $5,000 per dose. We have an expected discount for the Indian market expected at $1,000K per dose. Challenges and barriers. We have many but the most important are highlighted. Internally, we have heavy, heavy initial capital investment. Success of the drug hinges on phase three clinical trials and regulatory approval. Externally, Evitrux has been first to the market, patient affordability, and building a client network of doctors. For our SWOT analysis, some of our opportunities include the $10 billion biopharmaceutical market, as well as high demand. Some of our strengths include superior trial results and 100% response rates to radio and chemotherapy. Our threats mainly are Ebitrux as well as Merrick. Our weaknesses are affordability, an uninsured population, our lack of marketing experience, our clinical trials and regulations, as well as the building of new manufacturing plants. So here's a perceptual map for head and neck cancer. So as we can see, Biomap has lower side effects and even the lower price uh, on the market. So we can compare it to Hydrea, uh, which is slightly lower, has a slightly lower price in Biomap. However, it has uh, higher side effects. Uh, also, Abitax, which is one of the um, direct competitors to Biomap, uh, is, most expen is more expensive and have a higher price. So our value proposition is for the leading doctors and oncologists in India, Biocon offers the locally manufactured proprietary drug Biomab, which unlike Herbitux, has a 100% response rate when combined with radio and chemotherapy and a lower incidence of side effects like skin rashes while also being sold at a lower price. Uh, a broad overview of our plan includes some of the objectives, um, which there are two critical areas mentioned. Um, the first one is determining the correct approach to the approval process, either an accelerated approval or staying on track uh, with phase three trials. Um, and the second one is due to the fact that it's our first pr proprietary drug launch, we need to develop a strong strategy. Uh, additionally, we want to build a network of doctors and oncologists, which will help us promote Biomab to patients, uh, which will generate revenue and profits. Um, and we also want to earn a strong market share among competing head and neck cancer treatments. So some of the strategies that we'll dive into in this marketing plan are proving that uh, Biomab is safe and efficient through phase three clinical trials. Um, we also want to establish a reputation for Biocon. Uh, we'll do this by training our sales force prior to launch uh, through the selling of cancer generics. Um, and then also our marketing strategy will include not only doctors and oncologists, we'll also be marketing directly to head and neck cancer patients. So let's talk about Biomap's four Ps. So first, a product. So Biomap is the first proprietary biological therapy drug developed by an Indian company for an Indian population. It is used to treat head and neck cancer and target and block the proliferation of cancer cells. It has a 100% response rate in patients who use it in combination with radio and chemotherapy, 
and has low to no incidence rate of side effects uh, compared to, for example, Arbitex. It does not produce a skin rash among patients. So a few of the limitations of the product is that it needs refrigeration to preserve the quality. Uh, and also we still need uh, to go through phase three of the clinical trial, which is delayed, delaying our entry to the market. So second price. So because uh, Biomap has superior trial results, we believe it could be priced a little bit higher or similarly to Herbita than Herbitax, which is currently priced at 4,000 to 5,000. However, we still have to keep in mind this Indian brand discount uh, with the Indian population expecting a price uh, discount of around 1,000. That is why we're potentially uh, setting a price of 3,000 right now. So two limitations of the price is that uh, because it's a little, bit, a little bit more expensive than the competition, less people can afford the drug and we're also not maximizing market share. Uh, so the implications of the price is that uh, if we go, go, get into price war, um, we're maximizing profit right now, but we'll have the ability to set a lower price while maintaining our, maintaining our profit margin. Also, again, if we go to price war, um, we can set, uh, build a set of advertisements highlighting um, the biomaps advantages over the competitions, for example, the lack of side effects compared to Herbitax and also the fact that is, it is less expensive than Herbitax. For place, uh, because physicians and oncologists have a close and long-term relationship with hospitals and pharmacy and also uh, care about the fact that uh, it is convenient for them, uh, we want patients to go di directly through a hospital and pharmacy to receive the treatment. So some uh, a limitation of that is that uh, is the quality control through transport because it needs refrigeration. And an implication is that we're unable uh, the unable QA product quality before it being used on the patient. And lastly, promotion. So we have three types of uh, promotion. So the first one will be directed towards doctors via the pharmacy and hospital networks. We would use uh, business development representatives who can meet face-to-face -to, -face to explain the benefits of Biomab uh, compared to its competitors. The second one would be uh, again uh, directed towards doctors, but this time via scientific publication uh, on popular online forums and journals. And the last one would be directed towards patients via billboards, bus ads, and mobile ads. And all of our uh, promotions would be comparing uh, our competitors' prices to ours and the fact that we are less expensive than the competitors, also that we have a lack of side effects and the fact uh, that we are an Indian company targeting the Indian population. Um, um, limitation of the promotion may be that we don't have any certainty as to the efficiency of certain ads, for example, billboards or bus ads. Um, obstructions can make uh, reading difficult, or maybe uh, we don't know if they get noticed, or with this type of advertisement, we um, be even persuasive. So looking at the financial impacts of our plan, um, first of all, considering the customer lifetime value. Um, so we base our customer lifetime value on a six dose treatment cycle at our price of $3,000 per treatment. Uh, the six dose treatment cycle is based off our successful phase two results um, and ends up with a customer lifetime value of $18,000. Uh, for the break-even analysis, uh, we have fixed costs of 25 million from the manufacturing plant and variable costs that are between 70 and 75% of revenue. This is from cost of goods, uh, R&D, marketing costs, and then also an additional 5% royalty that we'll be paying to CMAB. Um, so with that, the break even is 33,333 dosages, which based on a full treatment cycle uh, would be about 5,555 patients. Next, we're going to tie all these different factors together into a final implementation plan. So here is a visual of the high level, highlighting the high level events of our implementation. So as you can see, as mentioned earlier, we are planning on moving forward with phase three clinical trials. This is important because uh, phase three clinical trials will act, will give us, provide us with additional marketing material as well as prove 
to doctors and patients the, the efficacy of our drug. Additionally, this will also take ammunition out of our competitors' uh, arsenal that they can use to market against us. So of course, this has its downside. And ex typical, typically, we expect around two years to run the entire duration of the phase three clinical trials. This means that Urban Tux will beat us to market by a year and a year and a half. However, we believe that the pros strong, strongly outweigh the cons here. This is because we need that two year, uh, two years of time to first build to build our manufacturing facility, build up our internal teams such as sales, marketing, logistics, uh, uh, clients, client network, doctor network, and as well, we're also planning on starting phase two clinical trials regarding utilizing biomab effectiveness targeting other cancers. This is because since we're already sinking so much investment into building the, the facility and building teams around this drug that we want to leverage it to this greatest potential and maximize ROI. So next we touch on the, the biggest pain points that we see and expect in implementation. So first, as mentioned earlier, Urbitox beats us to market. We believe that we can uh, beat this beat this time advantage they have with our lower prices and our better drug performance. Additionally, phase three clinical trials, they typically take a long time. So we can partner with YM Bioscience, which was licensed the drug from CMAB to collaborate on results and share results and hopefully accelerate both of our trial times. Some doctors might be already be in existing partnerships with pharmaceuticals uh, companies or with uh, certain hospitals, and we need to work around this. Some some pharma pharmacy companies will make doctors sign uh, contracts that don't allow them to sell competing direct competitor drugs, so we need to be mindful of that as well. And because our product requires constant constant refrigeration, we need to find a reliable um, logistics channel. To, so, to support our product transport. Because if our product spoils, that will greatly affect the effectiveness of our product and also affect our reputation and brand image. Next, we need to make sure we maximize ROI as much as possible. This is because of how much initial investment we're putting in and the slow ret return on investment. So we need to make sure we maximize that as much as possible. And this is going through all the all the different uh, high level events at in descending importance. So first, we need to get those clinical trials uh, started right away because those will take the longest amount of time. Next, we need to acquire and optimize the manufacturing facility for Biomab. Next, we'll be building sales teams uh, and training them on how to sell um, how to sell Biomab in the future by having them sell uh, cancer generics initially. This will also help build those initial connections with those doctors and oncologists and allow us to survey the doctor network to find and identify existing partnerships and any limitations we have. And whether we, have, we can build out our own logistics channel or we can integrate into existing supply chain. Next, we plan to advertise uh, Biomab to the patients themselves to raise awareness from a bottom-up appro approach. And finally, after Everything is, every, everything is done and we launched the product, we need to prepare for the future. And that um, is involved in investigating promising research opportunities, or preferably using the similar technology that, we, uh, that it took to create Biomab so that we can leverage our existing knowledge now. Finally, once this plan is implemented, we need to measure our success. This is done to, through two main metrics. The first is the percentage of India's oncologists and leading specialists that we managed to integrate into our, our doctor network. And the other metric is the total amount of market share we can capture. This is because um, even though these numbers are quite small in terms of market share, the majority of India's patients in head, head and neck cancer cannot afford our drug. And with 3% market share, we should be able to break even. Thank you very much for your time. We'll take any questions now.